Hello, fellow science educators. If you're like me, you want your students to do more than answer fact recall questions. You want them to be able to solve complex problems that they haven't seen before by using facts and skills that they have been practicing. But if you're like me, you're not always sure how to help them become better problem solvers. One problem is that sometimes our learning objectives are so broad that our students are not sure what to expect on the test and thus are not sure how to prepare for the test. It's as if we've given our students a map that only provides an overview and does not show enough detail for students to anticipate and practice specific navigational challenges. A complementary problem is that many of our learning activities, case studies, worksheets, concept maps, study guides, and so forth, are focused on details, but don't necessarily provide enough context to show how these practice problems relate to actual exam questions. Here, it's as if we've provided a map that focuses only on a few specific intersections, leaving students unsure of what to do when they are outside of that narrow range. Ideally, what we want to do is provide students with both, both the broad context and some specific well-chosen examples. Thus, a learning objective that seems very broad can be made more useful by explicitly linking it to specific examples. Conversely, a learning activity that seems very specific can be made more useful by explicitly linking it to a broader statement of context. To ensure that students have both the broad context and the specific examples that they deserve, my colleagues and I have devised a simple framework that we call Test Question Templates, or TQTs for short. Now, TQTs have four main parts, and the first two parts are the input and the output what information is provided to students, and what will students do with that information. These first two parts correspond roughly to statements of learning objectives. The last two key parts are an example and a key, a specific question in that input-output format, and an example of a successful answer to that question. And these last two parts correspond roughly to a piece of a learning activity. So if you use TQTs for in-class activities and homework assignments, you and your students may benefit in several ways. First of all, if you write the TQT clearly, it should show your students what they do and do not need to memorize. In this example, students are explicitly told that they will be given a table of the genetic code, making it clear that they need to be able to use this table but do not need to memorize it. Second, providing examples in this format should help students create many additional examples in the same format. And this should work especially well in groups where students can take turns solving each other's example problems. Third, if the TQT format is used both for learning activities and for actual exam questions, the activities and exams will be very well aligned. In other words, students will know in advance what the exams will be like and how to prepare for them. Meanwhile, instructors will find it relatively easy to write new exam questions so that they don't have to keep previous exams under lock and key. In summary, we believe that test question templates provide a structured, transparent, student-centered approach to analytical thinking. If this video has piqued your interest in TQTs, I'd love for you to read our first paper, which you can find online by searching for the phrase uh, test question templates in quotation marks. Or if you have questions or comments, I would be delighted to hear from you via email. Thanks for watching.